experience that. These are the people to whom Jibreel came to teach them their religion. The angel Gabriel came to sat among them, sit amongst them, and teach them their deen. These are the companions. These are the people who knew the circumstance of the revelation, which ayah was revealed in which circumstance. They are the ones who saw the Prophet ﷺ pray. They saw him with their eyes. They saw the Prophet ﷺ fast and make hajj. And so on and so forth. So they lived with Rasulullah ﷺ. They were his companions. They were eyewitnesses to the events. They would sit and learn directly from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the deen. So who could know better about Islam than his companions? It is absolutely logical that the people who would know best about this religion are the people who studied from the messenger to whom this religion was revealed. This is from aql. This is from logic. Actually, this is also the main reason why when I first became Muslim, I could never become Shia. I could never have become a Shia. Because when I first became Muslim, in fact, at the time, the Iranian revolution was very strong. And outside the mosque where I now work, which is the main mosque in London, the Regent's Park Mosque, the Central Mosque, every week you had, used to have the Shia handing out a newspaper, Al Khairan it was called. And we used to read it avidly. And we used to follow this slogan, no east, no west, Islam is the best, and all that type of stuff. Okay? And you know, Khomeini for many people was a big hero because it seemed as if he had shown to the world that once again we could implement Islam and have an Islamic state as we thought. But so I began to study Shiism and what it was teaching and what it was saying. And the big conflict I came was the attitude of the Shia towards the Sahaba. Now many of you may know and some of you may not that the Shia, first of all, they are a very small minority amongst the Muslims. They are only 15%. 85% of Muslims are Sunnis. Alhamdulillah. The Shia only constitute about 15%. So they are a small minority. However, their claim is, amongst the many things that they say, is that the majority of the companions of the Prophet apostatize from Islam after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Particularly the three Taghuts, who they call, a'udhu billah, the three Taghuts, Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman. They call them the three Taghuts, which means, Taghut means a false god. Uh, something that anything is worshipped besides Allah is a false god. Or, and it could mean an unjust ruler who rules according to other than the guidance of Islam. He is a taghut. So they call them the three taghuts. Because they claim that Abu Bakr and Umar and Ali, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them, usurped and deprived Ali of the rightful inheritance of being the successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, most of the companions agreed with that, so they also claimed that most of the companions apostatized from Islam. But I thought this is incredible. How is it that Allah chose to be the companions of the Messenger, a group of people who after his death apostatized from his religion? And these are the people who spent all of their life with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the people who are ready to give and, and often did give their lives in the service of Islam to protect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to protect the religion that the Prophet preached. How they sacrificed their money and their time and everything for the cause of Allah and His religion. Yet when the messenger dies, they apostatize. It doesn't make any sense. It's illogical. It seems to be totally, a totally irrational proposition. Rather, we believe that the companions are the best. 
of all the human beings after the prophets. And the best of the human beings after the prophets is Abu Bakr. And the best after him is Umar. And the best after him, although there's some disagreement, is it Ali or Uthman, or are they the same? But it will seem that the stronger evidence shows us that it is Uthman, Ibn Affan, and then Ali. These are the best. And then after that, we don't, we don't make a disagree, we don't make uh, a distinction amongst the companions. But generally also the companions themselves are the best of the human beings after the messengers. This is the status of the Sahaba with us.